Welcome to the Smoke Meat Podcast. I'm your host, Brad Pittman. Tonight I had a chance to sit down and talk with comedians Nick Copley, Lauren Ansley, and Larry Smith after the first Friday comedy show at Joe's Underground in Augusta, Georgia. Joe's is a sponsor of this podcast, and they're located at the corner of 8th and Broad, downstairs from the Lamar Building. Now sit down tonight and enjoy just listening to us talk about what makes us laugh on Smoked Meat. Okay, everybody, we're going to start the Smoked Meat podcast tonight. Uh, I'm going to let everybody introduce themselves, starting right here. I'm Nate Copley. Lauren Ansley. Larry Smith. All right. Uh, going to be a lot of fun tonight. We're just going to get up here and jabber, tell a couple of stories, uh, get stared at by the people that are here. Going to be a lot of fun. So, uh, Nate, tell me a little bit about this room. Tell me, tell me your comedy background. Tell me your life story. Anything. My life story. Oh, my God. I am, like, so middle of everything. <laughs> Just basic white guy and from middle-class suburbia who... <laughs> you just called yourself a bitch. I'm going to interrupt. I'm a basic bitch. You're a bitch. Yeah, you're a basic bitch whether you are a basic white guy. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm a basic I'm just bitch. I'm just white guy. Yeah, no, like, the, the, the fact that I ever got to do comedy and ever just, like, it, it was purely born out of frustration. <laughs> That's the entire reason why I'm doing this. Yeah, I, I think a lot of comedy is born out of that, you know. I, I think mine was born out of, well, what the fuck am I going to do now? I'm bored. You know, I was, I was 18. I was a very unsuccessful single guy. Oh, hardcore. I mean, I, I had to, like, soak my hand in vodka for a couple of hours before I could get lucky with it. Uh, <laughs> nice. The first gasp of the night. Oh, yes. There will be many more. Like the, one, one of the first, one of the jokes I forgot to tell tonight is my father's, like, super proud of me. But whenever my father talks about, like, the things he's proud about, it always goes back to high school. And he just tells everybody we know. And I'm like, gee, thanks, Dad, for telling everyone I peaked 14 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're the Al Bundy of the comedy world, apparently. Yeah, yeah, barely, yeah. Hey. yeah. Pants in his pants all the time. Uh, actually, he will, my, my other half will confirm that my hand is down in my crotch more often than not. <laughs> just just itching and scratching. Hey, <laughs> hey, don't, <laughs> don't knock it. When I was a kid, we were so poor. Had I not been a boy, I would have had shit to play with. So. <laughs> So tell, tell me a little, 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 take two, a little bit about yourself. Oh, are you talking to me? Oh. Yes. Hello. Well, I'm a 38-year-old Scorpio. <laughs> Get in line, fellas. <laughs> uh, so my name is Lauren Ansley. I live in Charlotte, North Carolina, and I've been doing comedy this most recently for two and a half years, and I say most recently because I actually got into it. I originally heard about the stand-up comedy class at the Comedy Zone in Charlotte on a first date. This guy shows me his set, and I'm like, okay, I could do better, and I did. I took the class, and I went to an open mic, and I quit for three years. And then I've recently gotten back into it, and here we are. Nice. Yeah, and I love it. I absolutely love it. I've just fallen in love with it. You know, as a kid, I, I had an aunt and uncle that lived in Charlotte, so we spent a lot of time up there in the yeah. summer. You know, we'd go to Carowinds and things like that. Had a really good time up there. It's a cool place, but that's the first place I ever rode a roller coaster. Yeah, yeah. I live right near Carowinds currently. I am going to be moving and pursuing comedy um, with a passion for over the next year, just kind of taking a delayed gap year. Yeah. yeah. Where, where are you going to move to? What town? Oh, Charlotte. Charlotte. <laughs> <laughs> just in with some go. friends who I used to live with. I'm really excited yeah. about it because they're really cool ladies you and make, they don't do comedy, so they're well adjusted. Make, <laughs> make that leap. Real good change of scenery. <laughs> oh, yeah. Make that leap, baby. But, uh, yeah, I mean, it's, I, I started back in probably 1990. Um, or as I like to church it up a little bit, the late 1900s. <laughs> and I did open mics for a couple of years. And I actually quit doing comedy for almost 20. Yeah. And a little break there, write some new material. <laughs> and went up to the Laughing Skull in Atlanta a couple of years ago. And Love just, the Laughing Skull. I, I do either really, really good there or I really bomb so hard there it's ridiculous. But it, I love room. the place. That's a very cool room. If, if nothing else, they got good groceries. 
the, in terms of the southeast, like Laughing Skull is definitely it's like the zanies of the southeast. I've only been there one time, and it was for an open mic. I just happened to be in town for my day job, and I got on, and it was sold out for an open mic. Like every seat, it was sold out for an open mic, and they paid to be there. It was amazing. Well, you know, one of the. Um, Atlanta has a number of comedy festivals. Uh, Red Clay's one of them. And, uh, I just Laughing got turned down by them today. Well, congratulations. The, the, yeah, well, yeah. Congr- well <laughs> sorry, but the, <laughs> <laughs> Laughing Skull is like a hundred times harder to get into yeah. than Red Clay. Oh, yeah. Like, Red Clay, or oh, sorry, Laughing Skull brings in like the biggest names of the biggest names. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that, 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 it, it's your turn, Larry. I for an hour. I don't need to talk anymore. <laughs> I just, you guys had to listen to me for a long time, and now look at these, look at these fools, look at these people. The one on the, the one on the left is so judgy. She's so judgy. Hi, I'm Larry Smith. Am I? Look. Hey, I've been talking on the microphone for an hour. Here, let me take this microphone right now. Right? It got handed to me. <laughs> it did, it did. Well, so, so my name's Larry Smith. I'm a 41-year-old Scorpio. Get in line, gentlemen. That's a callback to your previous joke. What did, what did you just say? I said I'm a 41-year-old Scorpio. Get in line, gentlemen. <laughs> Well, and that was a lie. I'm a cancer. I'm a cancer. Up through and through. You know me. What's that? Yeah, and I get, you can never get rid of me once I'm there. Yeah. Yeah. If you're not careful, if you don't, if you don't extract us, we'll kill you. Um, I do comedy for a while. I don't know. What am I supposed to say? Yeah. Am I supposed? I I don't. I guess I just, I talked for an hour. Now I'm all tired and stuff. Um, I get to do cool stuff. I get to tell people all types of fun stuff about my body, um, which I do. <laughs> it's not sex stuff either. It's just gross stuff. Um, yeah. <laughs> it was really good. Um, yeah, doing this for four years, but I've gotten some really good opportunities in the four years I've been doing it. I've just dumbed my way into... Some really good opportunities and, uh, you know, stuff like stuff. That's my second time back at Joe's tonight, so. Yeah. Yeah. I, you know, I, I don't. Don't, don't let the fact that I just stood up up and, and did a set. Fool you! I don't like talking about myself. Uh, yeah. Don't necessarily talk about because you talk about stories. It's not about yourself. It's about your story. Yeah, it, true. As I, as I'm starting to get into the microphone again. <laughs> that was such a. Uh, hey, gang. But yeah. Um. So okay. All right. Normally, when I come off stage, I just go sit in a corner somewhere and drink beer quietly. Um. And. Uh, usually, it's just crying. Just usually, just crying. <laughs> it is. It's not necessary, but it helps. So yeah, but it, yeah, d- d- dumbed my way into some good opportunities. Yeah, working at Zany's and getting to do a bunch of comedy clubs throughout the Midwest and Zoo Bar over in Lincoln, Nebraska, and just a bunch of really cool, fun venues. And Joe's is one of my favorite places to be. I love this room because. Because it makes you work for it, even they though. Don't give you anything here. But you, it's good for you because you have to work to get their attention. You can't just be lazy about it. You gotta, you gotta go up and you've gotta grab their attention and keep it. And even if you've had their attention for twenty minutes, if you start to lose it, you know it. And so you've got to do something to get them, uh, which is why I screamed "fuck man" a couple times. <laughs> Uh, thanks. Oh, 
Yeah. Which my, my wife is going to hate you now because I, y'all don't know this about me. I had two strokes four years ago. Oh, well, shit, man. That's like yeah, eight well. strokes. Four strokes, <laughs> too. That's like eight. Yeah, hey, you got skills, man. Learning kids pays off. But uh, one thing that happens with it is my filters are gone. So my wife's going to fucking hate you because I'm liable to be in the grocery store and look at the back and go, fuck, man! <laughs> And she's not going to have a clue. And I'm going to have to explain this so the cops are taking me away. <laughs> and the back boy's crying and writing his little statements. So, I, funny story how that happened is, so I was in Waterloo, Iowa, which I love Waterloo, Iowa, because they, it, it, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, so, I go up. I'm way uh, the the guy in front of the feature is is doing his set, and this dr- super drunk dude walks in, and this big huge drunk dude, and was like, "What are we doing karaoke?" And he was sincere, and no, no, this is the feature that came. He comes in and he's starting to talk to the feature, and the feature's like, "Yeah, man, you want to sing a song?" And gives him the microphone. No, you never give him the microphone. Right. So I'm in the back of the room screaming, "No, no, no!" <laughs> Yeah. Oh and so I go up and I'm like, oh, I got some work to do. I go up and the dude comes up and he's paying attention and, but he's yelling out, <laughs> he's yelling out song requests as I'm doing jokes. Dude is like, yell, I mean, and like legit wanting me to sing songs. And I'm trying to just play it off. Face face. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Come on, man, I saw the sign. No, you didn't. No one saw the sign. So I go into, there's a bit where I, I turn my back to the audience and I'm doing kind of a, an act out, and I turn over my shoulder to finish the joke because that's all part of it, and he's in front of the stage doing this little kooky dance. And, and now, I've like it's, I explained on stage, I was a bouncer, and so I've got the bouncer voice. And I spun and screamed, fuck, man. And dude, like, like I'd hit him. He jumped and he looked around and I just pointed at the door and he nodded. I looked down at his feet and walked out the door. I turn. It's a, I mean, the fucking room is full. I turn and everyone in the room is just like wide eyed, just holy shit. And I go, huh. well, well, but they're like, what the fuck? And I just kind of go, ha ha. Hey guys, let me explain. I used to be a bouncer. I used my bouncer voice sometimes. And then I did the bag boy thing. And I then I turned fuck man into just a catchphrase the rest of the night. I get off stage. I go back. I grab my beer. I'm heading to the restroom. I walk through some of the people that were watching. And as I'm walking, I was like, hey, excuse me. Two dudes go, fuck, man. And I spin with my hands up. I'm like, oh, I'm getting in a fight. And these guys jump like, no, we're just kidding. Sorry, it was the thing that you were doing. And I was like, oh, right, ha ha, no, just, it's a thing. You're right. High fives for everybody. Everybody's a special, special snowflake tonight. I love you all. You're, thanks for coming. All right, bye. Yes. <laughs> guys. You'd mentioned that, you, you know, you'd had a few strokes and your filters were completely disappeared. Like, that was the whole jet. <laughs> that, Larry, Larry's flicking his wife off. Awesome. Um, like, the start of my set, was, that was the whole genesis of, you know, my grandfather appearing, like, naked. Actually, he, what had happened was, is I was going to leave the house and I... You know, I, I try to be a good grandson. My grandparents have just moved down here. It's the first time I've been close to them, and I'm just like, oh no, 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 just it, it's fine. Just, just wait. Just, just let them finish up with the shower. My, my grandma's like, no, no, no. I'll go, I'll go tell them. And she comes back. She's like, okay, he knows you're leaving. And about five minutes later, he literally comes out in a towel, just soaking wet. And I've never seen this man without his, his clothing before, and it was just like, oh. It's like, wow, this is the ghost of, I, I just looked at him, I was like, this is the ghost of Christmas future. <laughs> and his filters were gone, like he's never raised his voice with me in like 
my entire life, and he was just getting so mad at me, and I'm just like, okay, I can work this into a bit. <laughs> Just remember, you indirectly came from those balls. Yeah, well, yes, yes. You know, well, Chad Daniels did this great bit where his son was, where he got like this, this combo with his son, and his son's like, "You, you got two straws, man." He's like, "No, I got one." He's like, "Ew, gross. I don't want to touch that." He's like, "You do realize you came from the inside of my balls. Like, if you came out of one of my bodily fluids, you do not get to complain about my bodily fluids." <laughs> I, I tell you, you know, the, the strokes were were definitely weird because, like I say, I don't have the filters. And y'all may see it one night when, if y'all get to see me on stage, uh, one of the fun ticks that I have that comes back is, is a combination of strokes and 28 years of PTSD. I've been a paramedic my whole adult life. And uh, I have a... I said, oh, I said, oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> Woo, fancy. <laughs> She's been saving that one, y'all. <laughs> Definitely seen light bulbs up assholes. Yeah, definitely. Um, I'd have never dreamed when I was a young, fresh faced kid how much different people's piss and shit I would handle. Oh, oh, oh yes, definitely. Um, for those of you listening, um, he is an EMT. He will probably corroborate this. If you decide to stick any foreign object up your asshole and you end up in the emergency room, just know that they will bring every medical student in to make fun of you. Oh, like, how... They won't use your name in the elevator, but they will talk about you. Oh, dude, housekeeping comes into the room. I can, I can have somebody throw up all over the floor, and it takes me 45 minutes to get somebody out of the room. Somebody has to stick something weird in their ass. There's like eight of them in there doing a terminal clean all of a sudden. But, yeah, I have a stutter that comes back. And uh, actually, a week after the strokes, when I got out of the hospital, I actually came here and did a set with a stutter. And uh, it lasted about two minutes. But the funny thing is the crowd was rolling with it. They loved it because it's funny as shit because it's kind of the water boy stutter. I repeat things over and over and over. Um and it, it'll, it'll come back at work sometimes. I work in an ER now. And a, a good example is we had a guy come in who had seizures. And, you know, when you have a seizure, you're out for a while afterwards. So I kept going in to check on him. He started waking up. You know, his eyes were just barely open. And the stutter just picked them to come back. And God, y'all, God, pray with me this shit don't stick. Because sometimes when I do this, it will stick. <laughs> and this podcast is going to get a whole lot better and a whole lot longer. But I looked at him and I said, "So are, are, are you are you feeling 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 better 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 better?" And his eyes went from this to boom, wide open. You could have thrown a baseball through his eye and not hit skin. <laughs> and he looked like, "Fuck, I will take my medicine every day from now on." So I mean, that's that's the shit that I live with, and it's hilarious. I'm happy I can find the humor in it because it it sucks ass a lot of times, but. Well. Uh, I've actually got a perfect closer for you if you ever end up in one of the situations where you're stuttering. Just like at the end, go, th- th- thank you for coming to the King's speech. <laughs> <laughs> nice. I, <laughs> I, I tell everybody it's kind of like a comedy coupon. You know, the show could be either 10 minutes or 45 with the same material. But, uh, you know. <laughs> that, so that that's your wife. Yeah. Are, are you are you working off a DUI or something? <laughs> but I, I actually stole that from Christopher, That's Christopher why Titus. Ten years, so we, 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 we both got people us are, are you working one off? I am very alone. <laughs> <laughs> You're not alone. You've got propane. You know, you'd be a lot less alone if Craigslist hadn't have shut down their personals. <laughs> Misconnection. I saw you in public. <laughs> nice, nice. So, so what? What do you? What do you love about doing comedy? Give us some of your jacked up, jacked up stories. Oh God, I love everything about doing comedy. Um, so. Like part of my set, people do love to come up and talk to you after sets. And one one of the guy, he, <laughs> what interaction with other people? <laughs> I'm very alone. Um, so so I will just mention this in general. Um, 
that comedy is very, very, it's like a dominant kind of activity, right? Which a lot of times it's, that is also equated with masculine energy. So I listen to podcasts and stuff and these guys will talk about, oh yeah, these girls like hit on me after a show and I'm like, oh, I'm just over here like hanging out, <laughs> you know, so it's, it's very different. It's, it's a very masculine kind of energy and, um, I, I still love it though. I, it's fascinating. I love talking about it. I love doing it. Um, and I've ne I never, ever, ever imagined life after college. I never imagined getting married. My parents were divorced when I was two and a half. I grew up not ever thinking about getting married. It just wasn't a thing that I thought about. People in school would be like, oh, what is your, well, okay, so your mom said no. What about your dad? And I'd be like, that's a foreign concept to me. It was just always my mom said no, therefore it was no. Um, so I don't know. It's just, it's very eye-opening but it's it's you're so vulnerable on stage and i and we were talking about this for just a second we tell stories but there's also this wall you know so you can you and breaking down that wall i think is crucial to just getting having people kind of get to know who you really are as a person and i have not done that yet in my comedy journey it's, it, it's not e <laughs> sorry it, it's definitely not easy taking a knife and just cleaving your chest open like i mean you know a lot of people think this is therapy and you know in some cases it's, it's terrible therapy. It, it's terrible therapy it's basically saying hi i'm gonna tell you all my problems please fucking laugh at me Yeah, what was it? Greg Barron said that. Yeah, Greg Barron said that. I think on, uh, or he may have taken it. I don't know. He posted it as a Facebook. I love Greg. You, yeah, it, it's a very common theme. Only. It, this isn't therapy. Like this is definitely like I go up and like. <laughs> This thing again? You can come up and say things that will make you feel better and makes the audience feel better. It makes the somebody in the audience may not feel alone when you're talking about certain things. It can be therapeutic, but it's not your therapy. If you need therapy, fucking go to a therapist. Go to a therapist. If you are working through some things and you find a way to make it funny, then fucking do it. Just if I've had a bad week. And I go up and have one really good set, that can fix everything for me. It's not therapy, but it's like, it, it, it's therapeutic. Well, and it's I, gratification. Like, yeah. If, 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 if you, I'm sorry. If, if you consider comedy therapy, like, I just imagine you coat yourself in honey and roll around in fire ant nests. Like, it's not therapy. <laughs> I am surprisingly okay with the reverse bang gang situation. It's like four bottoms and one top. Yeah. It's like a reverse bar stool joke. <laughs> How do you fit four bottoms on one dick? <laughs> nice. <laughs> nice. <laughs> you, you know, I, I know what you're saying about comedy. Not, I mean, it, it's not really therapy in one way. Like I say, if you need therapy, go get fucking therapy because I've probably retired three of them or just made them straight quit and need therapy themselves. But like I said, it, it is therapeutic. And well, I've, it's getting people to identify with you, if anything. Well, yeah, yeah, you have to be vulnerable to a point on stage. You have, you have to be vulnerable, but you have to still... You were talking, you were kind of alluding to it earlier when you were talking about the, the energy you have to show out there. Um, you have to be vulnerable, but you still have to be in control of the room. Yeah, yeah. you can't be so vulnerable yeah. you're giving control to the crowd, yeah. but like, yeah. I mean, especially if you do like some serious dark material, which I have, it doesn't fly <laughs> over well here, yeah. but I've done some serious dark material, and you'll hear three or four people in the background at a 40 people laughing their asses off because they've had that same experience but and yeah. Connecting with those three but people. yeah like I did this I, I used to do this joke like my mom passed away from cancer in 2015 
you know, I'm over it. I've gone through the things. But I used to, I, when I finally got comfortable and started doing the jokes, I'd be, and my, my mom is definitely one of the reasons I've got my sense of humor. Like, you know, she was quick-witted. She was spitfire. And she had a little bit of dark humor about it. And so I'd walk into the room when, you know, she's thin as bones, and I'd be like, I'd just go to her and be like, I'd be like, how's it going, Skeletor? And she'd be like, I'll get you, He-Man. <laughs> and, you know, like, she had that sense of humor about it. And I told that joke before. And if you've had that experience, yes, it's funny. But if not, you're like, oh, my God. It's horrifying. Life is horrifying. Life, life, life is filled with yeah. like, like that. You, I, I think what someone... I, my life has been nothing but cupcakes and kittens. You and your antlers yeah. need to calm yeah. down. Yeah, cupcakes, and kittens, and sword By the way, that's growing back acid. nicely. Thank you. Yeah, sword yeah. fights on and, and, you know, for... Yeah, for I've never, like, I, I tried ecstasy once, and it only evened me out. <laughs> I, I feel like now is the time to give a soliloquy. This is something that I've prepared for a while. I just want you guys to know. That sometimes I get knocked down, <laughs> but I get up again because you you're never going to keep me down. I get knocked down, but I get up again. You're never going to keep me down. We're going to have a talk later about you stealing my punchlines. <laughs> Larry. It's a callback. It's just a callback. Oh, call Larry's just like I'm imagining bright lights that's, and shadows. That's, that's parallel thinking. That's what it is. Parallel thinking. But yeah, you know, I, I used to. I, I've got kind of an on stage persona that it's it's not as strong and as strict as it was. You know, this the way I'm dressed tonight is the way I dress on stage, but it's also half the way I dress normally. Right. So you're basically just like a parent head who does comedy. Yeah, I'm a freaking dad, you know, and uh. <laughs> <laughs> a friend of mine actually brought me this hat from Puerto Rico. Yeah, I, I like this shirt. Oh, yeah. But it says one thing, Margarita Bell. Oh, yeah. I don't do tequila anymore. No. It's more It's like Margarita This Village. This is the dress one. It's low-key Key West. This Hey, old over there. You know, by the way, speaking of accents, this is a little <laughs> off topic, but the Chicago accent has to be the most boner deflating accent in the world, only next to New Jersey. Like, Boston, uh, the Boston accent. Yeah, I don't know. I, def- I, I, I didn't grow up near Chicago even. I grew up in Illinois, but my, my default like dumb guy accent is the South Chicago. Oh, what the hell? <laughs> a dumb oh, uh, Like my worst nightmare is I hook up with a guy from Chicago. He's like, oh yeah, oh yeah. So, like, and I'm just oh, like, holy shit, you're really blowing my mind really good right now. Like, oh my god, I'm pretty sure that my uh, perineum just uh, to hit your uvula. You've never had butt sex. I can tell that right now. <laughs> What's a perineum? That's the little underside of, so, you know, on an un, uh, on a circumcised penis. It's been a while. Please go into <laughs> grave detail. Absolutely. Okay. Tell, tell her slow and so. <laughs> so, on a circumcised penis, where the head come, so, you know, the, the shaft you remember the shaft? I think so. <laughs> and then there's the head. Yeah. You know how the head has that little like, almost like butt cheek area? Yeah. That little, that little waddle of skin that used to be foreskin? That little waddle? That little, that little something? Where you can, you can do one of these and he make, makes him go, oh, oh. What is it called? That's the what's the, what's is that the frenulum? frenulum? Well, maybe for you. This is clear evidence that Larry is married, and he no longer needs to know the anatomy of men. Ruins. The perineum is your taint. 
Hey, one man's perineum is another man's treasure. This is why I don't use science terms when I talk. This is, Look, this is why I don't use science terms when I talk. That's what I, that's what I mean. He also gave a lot of awkward eye contact. I so I feel, I feel like I, I'm going to have to talk to someone. We're going to have to re-enter therapy. Fuck, man. Well played, sir. Well played. Well, you know, <laughs> okay. Speaking of, the, speaking of the perineum, um, I do have. To, you know what? Nothing is more beautiful than having Speaking speaking of the perineum, is that the phrase? Look, I got stuff mixed up. Sometimes it happens. I just, I, sometimes you don't know your asshole from your. I, I think the part you were referring to is the frenum. Fren- frenulum. frenulum. That's, no, that's a production company for television. <laughs> <laughs> that's who produces for Fren 99. Frenulum. I'll be it's, Frenulum. It's, 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 that's uh, that's uh, that, uh, that nice guy from uh, from uh, Manuka, Illinois, that uh, played the Ron Swanson. You know, <laughs> he's uh, the uh, Frenulum. He says it at the end of uh, every episode of Brooklyn Nine Nine. Nice. Okay, like your thing. But but you know yeah, that. No, that's why I, I did it. It's right in the air. Oh, it's all the rails, Mike. Oh, it's, it's hardcore off the rails, but that's okay. We have no rules. But, you know, I, I don't know how y'all's writing process. I know I know mine. I like to get around people, just like a circle like this, and it's right. And for, I got I got I, I used to do radio. Arguing over that was Larry. Larry Smith, everybody. <laughs> Larry, follow me on Twitter. Larry, Larry Smith doesn't know his friend from his favorite name. <laughs> Boy, if I had a dollar for every time my old man said that. Boy, you don't know your parent name from a friend of mine. Boy, you don't know Shanola from Shanola. <laughs> God damn it, Bobby. <laughs> What the hell? Don't spit out your beer, God damn it! That's alcohol abuse, you crazy bastard. Please say I sell perineum and perineum accessories. I could only dream to sell perineum and perineum accessories. I ain't hit the big leagues yet. I dabbled in frenulums one time, but there wasn't a huge market in it. Somebody mentioned perineums. Mm. Where's Where's the paper boy? Haven't seen the paper boy in a while. Looking for some good news. I I hear he's got a nice frenulum, though. I fucking Kool Aid man my way through every podcast I'm ever on. I just. Hey, I look at it this way. I've got like 12 hits so far. I just started. Uh, people don't want to hear my fucking voice. Pe- people don't want to hear my voice, so jabber away. I took some high school, asked me a question. Writing styles, how you write, that's where we transition. <laughs> well, you just, you just saw it. Well, that you know, go, go, going back to where we were talking about, you know, my, my own stage persona, I'm kind of a dad. And I've always thought, okay, I need to do this type material. But my mind is so <laughs> fucking dark. Oh, dude, it is hard. Bigfoot's afraid in my mind it's so dark. <laughs> Um, I was sitting around with some friends one night, one of the guys that used to be here, Chance uh, Purple Drink. And we were writing one night, and I came up with an awesome joke, and I just gave it a chance because it didn't fit my set. I, I said, you know, I bet an Amish girl could give a mean hand job with all that butter that they churn. <laughs> you're thinking about it. I am. Hold on. <laughs> Guess what you're getting for Christmas? Butter churn. <laughs> I grew up around Amish girl. Hold on. Give me a second. There was one. Like a 
What's, what's his name, Hezekiah? <laughs> oh, man. I, honestly, any other time I could think of 200 Amish female names. Now I can't think of one. You know, Abilene, hell, I don't know. Uh, Rebecca's always a good one. See, I can't use Ruth. That was my mother-in-law's name. So. <laughs> <laughs> the way you said it, she's not using it anymore. God damn it. Oh, what a horrible human being. What a horrible human being. I'm not responsible for that shit. Don't look at me. I'm not. He's looking at you for salvation. Oh, shit. Oh, days beyond that. Way beyond that. <laughs> Well played. I mean, that, that was that every Catholic priest. Uh, I just, I would like to ask a question of this podcast. What you got? How long is this podcast? Till y'all decide we're done. I'm actually fixing to look at the timer now. Grab the mic, somebody. What's that? It's twelve thirty. Yes, it is twelve thirty. Well, quick quest or or quick answer to the writing or to the how you write. I basically spend my. Uh, eight hours a day in a in a room alone, and uh, and I have my thoughts to myself, and that's basically what happens. Most people just call that masturbation. No, uh, no, I, no. No, they fired that guy. No, no, they they literally fired that guy. Uh, well, no, he 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 didn't get fired for masturbation. He got fired for uh, his pants halfway down around his ankles while the monkeys ran loose. Uh, I'm pretty sure he was masturbating. It, it, it's possible. It was on Jay Leto, so this isn't exactly uh, spilling the tea. <laughs> yeah, my, uh, my my place of work, I will not name it, but we were the uh, butt of late night jokes for two weeks. I didn't realize we'd be king shaming this evening. It's only shame if you hey, feel hey, the shame. I'm not shaming him. Late night host. Well, y'all, I didn't just get off stage. I didn't just do a show. So I'm not fucking tired, but I know that y'all are. So we're hitting about 45 minutes. I want to hear more about this smoked meat. About the smoked meat? I make my own sausage. Go on. How big is your sausage? <laughs> my sausage is as big as the propane will let it get. Is there a suction cup on the end? No, but it has a frenulum. <laughs> hey, you got a friend you lemon me. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's you. You rented the wrong toy Toy Story. Let, 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 let's end it before we ruin this beautiful, beautiful, beautiful moment. <laughs> there we go, y'all. I've had a great time. Y'all did a great show tonight. I want to thank Joe's Underground for sponsoring this. Uh, y'all got anything to say before we go? Yeah, give yourself a plug. <laughs> Butt plug, that is. Hey, hack a ta Um, at pound smith2, just like that, yeah, p-o-u-n-d-s-m-i-t-h-2, cause that's my initials, and I didn't realize that my initials were pound. They're LBS, and it took me until I was 25 years old, and a friend pointed it out, and I felt like a real dumbass. <laughs> but that's my handle on Twitter, so do that. Facebook, I don't fucking, anyway, just Twitter. Instagram is the same thing. Is that good? Marketing person? I really sold it, didn't I? There's some fun and clever stuff. No, ugh. All right, mine is... 513 lady. Yeah, five, okay. Tall underscore Lauren underscore 513 on Instagram. Lauren Ansley, that's my name. You can find me on Facebook. That guy just checked out her legs. I'm just saying. It just happened in the bar. And um, Twitter is, you can find me at Lauren Ansley. I'm distracted. There's, there, I've had some vodka. Here you go, Nate. <laughs> and, and she's on Adult Friendly on Finder. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that, that was awesome. Um, I'm Nate Copley. Uh, please don't friend me on Facebook. I have enough friends, and if you don't have at least 30 in common, I'm going to think you're a weirdo. Um, 
But no, uh, I, I mainly do Twitter. Uh, my handle is at Nate C, C is in cunt, Copley, C O P L E Y. <laughs> Uh, my my Twitter account is currently locked for the moment as I am trying to go for a new position at job at a job and don't need them to see the thirty seven thousand horrible tweets that I've tweeted. <laughs> but anyways, give me about a month or two and follow me at Nate C Comedy on Twitter. All right. <laughs> Uh, I'm Brad Pittman. Once again, I'm your host. Follow me at Brad Pittman on Facebook, Brad's Comedy um, on YouTube, Fiction Starter Video Channel. This is a Smoke Meat Podcast. Fuck, man! <laughs>